So our region is going to be 0, 1, comma 1 cross 0, 2. And surface z equals 10 plus x squared plus 3y squared. So rectangle, uh, vo rectangle regions are relatively easy because you just have constant x, y values. So set it up. We have our f of, this is f of x, y right here. And you get to choose, should this be dx, dy, or dy, dx? For rectangular regions, it generally doesn't matter. It will matter at some point, but for now, you can go either way. How about this? Do the opposite order that the person sitting next to you is doing. Unless. So I set the two up. So just make sure you're doing the opposite one of your neighbor. Your answers won't agree to the last step, though. So I'm going to give you two minutes to finish this. Antiderivatives are easy. I'm going to slowly reveal more steps. sure your partial derivative, antiderivative is all right. It's a little strange when you take an x antiderivative of stuff with y's. So 
to make sure whatever side you're on. And of course, plug in endpoints now for the correct variable. Don't plug in the endpoints for the wrong variable. Problems on the board that you see so far? So those are equal 86, 86. All right, questions. So the reason I knew they were equal at the beginning is from Fubini's theorem. It says it didn't matter what order. Now, I did make a small mistake. If I made a mistake that wasn't caught, I probably wouldn't get the same number at the very bottom. You generally won't have time to do both ways on a quiz or a midterm, so you'll choose one. We'll see some examples where it is basically impossible to go in one way, so then you go the other way. We we'll may see another example where it's difficult to go one way, and so you wish you went the other way. So we went. Rectangular regions, we're now going to go over general regions. So we're going to look at some regions first. And we'll lay them out nicely, x, y. Now remember, these are regions, the input for the function. So the output you could think of as a z-axis, 
uh, coming out of the board or out of your paper. So you can think of a surface sitting over top of this region. So maybe a region looks kind of like this. We go A to B. Now the top and the bottom are functions. They're not uh, horizontal lines. So we'll go with bottom function g of x, top function f of x. Our height function We'll go with the capital FXY. So take any XY in this region here and capital F it. It will give you the height of that above that point. So I want the volume of F over this region. So I just drew the base of the region. The height, who knows what that looks like, just some big f function. So we'll start out with something sort of similar to what we did before. I don't know the order yet, so I'm just going to write dA. Did I write that last section? dA is dx dy or dy dx. It can go either way. So. DA just means there's a two-dimensional uh, two-dimensional antiderivative coming up. So that's all DA means. It could go xy, dx dy, or dy dx. So we're going to need to figure out, and the question is, what are we going to put right here? So that's the tricky part. They're certainly not all going to be numbers, or else we have a rectangle. So they cannot all be numbers. So the outer ones actually have to be numbers. So the outside ones have to be numbers. They must be numbers. And if I say the outside ones have to be numbers, should I use x values or y values? So the way I drew my region, we're going to go with x values there's a very clear minimum maximum x value going on. So because those must be numbers, we're going to use x values because of the shape of our region. I'm going to draw another region that's going to have a flat top and bottom and curve sides. And in that case we're going to flip the order around. So if the outside need to be x values, so I'll write x equals x equals this obvious we go from A to B. That should be pretty clear from the region going A to B. What does that mean about the order? Is it dx dy or dy dx? dy dx. dy dx. So the second one or the outer one is a dx. So our dy is going to go first. dx matches the outside endpoints. Now we're going to work on the inside uh, maximum minimum values. So they're definitely y equals because it's a dy integral. You don't have to be too creative to decide what is the minimum and maximum y values. They're not constants, but the minimum is g of x, according to the way I drew it. And the yeah, max is f of x. So those are changing depending on uh, what x values you're using. So the minimum is g of x. The max is little f of x. 
So this is a little bit strange. Your endpoints are functions now. But remember, there is no try. There's only do. You know how to take an antiderivative with respect to y. Hopefully, you can do that step. It's a little tricky when there's x's hanging around. And then you're just going to literally plug in the first endpoint everywhere you see y. And then subtract, you plug in the second endpoint wherever you see y. There's nothing else to it. So it looks strange, but it same exact procedure you've always done. So I have two examples. Let's do the second, actually three examples. Let's do the second case, the second type of region. That'll open up the other way. What's the main function that we're taking the antiderivative of? A big F, yeah. What is that? Some height function, some okay. function of so x and y. Okay. It just represents whatever height function. Uh, if we go back to the last section, the height function that I gave you at the end was some, let's see, polynomial. Right here, 10 plus x squared plus 3y squared. It was a multivariable polynomial. And I th we had some other polynomial before that, like 100 minus some x squared minus y squared, something like that. So those are the height functions. All right, so that was a region with a sort of flat x uh, minimum, x maximum right there. Uh, let's say this uses uh, x equals a and x equals b as boundaries. Probably a better way to say it. So we got flat boundaries in the x dimension. So I'm going to redraw a region, but I'm going to have flat bounds in the y, uh, the y axis now. So it's going to have a flat top and a flat bottom. Hershey Kiss. This region doesn't have a flat top. So that's a little bit tricky. It's pretty obvious it has a flat bottom though. So this could have a flat top if I chopped it off right here instead of going all the way. So we got Obviously, y equals a, y equals b. You can write those two down. Now, notice the top's not actually flat. That's not terribly important here. What is important is the minimum x and maximum x. You have functions for those. So it's going to be a little bit strange. The minimum x and the maximum x are both x equals. But these are going to be x equals a function of y now. And we'll use the same letters. So our minimum will go f of y, and our maximum will be g of y. So we have some minimum and maximum function of y. It's a little bit strange, because your function is x equals a function of y. I didn't draw recognizable functions, so these are not like square roots or cube roots. I just drew some weird region right here. The important thing to note is f is on the left and g is on the right no matter what height you are on this region. So no matter what, f is on the left, g is on the right. No matter where you are going up, you could think of slicing it up like this. As you go up, same functions are on the same sides the whole time. They don't cross over. So the fact that at the top they're actually equal is not important. That's not actually important right there. What would be bad is if they crossed over and then went out the other way. You'd have to kind of flip it around. So you'd have a second region. You'd have to break your region into two pieces, just like you did 
before when your two functions flipped over. So this gets into the idea of small and big. You have to decide which one is the big one, which one is the little one, and subtract them. That's one way to think about it. Well, I shouldn't say subtract them. We're using them as endpoints. But your little endpoint better be little, and your big endpoint better be big. If they flip around, you're going to get negative volume. All right, let's write out the volume here. So this is going to be a double integral. Now, you can already tell what's on the outside. It's going to be y is on the outside. So y equals a to y equals b. Now the inside, because of that, better be x equal x equal. When you first start out with these, you probably should write the y equals x equals above the endpoints for your uh, integral notation. So you're sure. What I don't want to do is go dy dx. That's very wrong. Because x, the inside, the inside variable is x, better not be y. So this is the same height function, but now I can see I need dx here because I'm using x's as my endpoints and dy on the outside. Once this is all set up, what is the small x function? The one on the bottom here. That's a little f of y. And what is big x? g of y. It's a little bit strange. Just remember, x increases as you go to the right. So the big one is, well, I should say, increase as you go to the right. The big one is the one further to the right, not the one further to the left. That's always a small one. Usually, volume is counted as positive. So f of x, y, or whatever variables should generally be greater than or equal to 0. If it is negative, you generally are going to make it negative or make it positive by putting a negative in front of it. So if f of x, y is, is less than 0, you're going to compute this part separately with a second volume. So compute separately, then make this volume positive. So what am I talking about? If we were doing area, and I asked you for the area right here, or actually the total area, you would you could say it cancels out, but I want you to count this whole thing as positive area and then count this separately as positive area. That's all I mean. So split up your region into what would be negative and then force it to be positive. There's lots of ways to do it. You can just compute the area normally and just erase the negative sign in the very last. Or not erase it, but say I'm taking the positive version of this. Or you could put a negative sign in front of your integral because you know it's going to be negative at the end. You can get fancy and switch endpoints if you want to. There's lots of ways to. Yeah, you can do that too if, if you know that there's symmetric. Yeah. Uh, sym symmetry becomes harder to see in higher dimensions. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have drawn symmetrical one, but like, you understand what I mean. You just chop it up into, instead of one big region, it's two smaller regions. So we'll do three. Three examples.
So I'm just going to use capital R for region. Oh, yeah, I think I've used RBB before. There we go. Region bounded by? I think we did that last quarter. All right, region bounded by x axis y equals x and x equals 1. With your height function, or z equals 3 minus x minus y. Find the volume under the surface. So one of the most important parts of these problems is knowing what your region looks like. So sketch out your region right now. Most of the region bounds are pretty easy to sketch. I think the hardest one is x equals y. Any region questions? So I showed you two types of regions. Could it be the first type? So let me sketch real fast version of the first type. Oh, well, first type had horizontal flat sides, something like this. Or is it more like that? Or could it go either way? Actually, it can go either way. It's got a flat side horizontally and vertically. So let's think about it. The first way here, and the first way was a d y d. That was a d y d x, and I needed a y equals f of x, y equals g of x. So we needed a top and a bottom function. So let's go this first route right here. And I'm going to redraw the region. And we had a, an x boundary as well. And we went from A to B. So let's do the easy part. What is A and B? Zero and one. Zero and one. All right. X equals zero, x equals one. So that's the left and the right boundary. What is the top function? Oh, very good. Y equals x. What is the bottom function? It's too easy, it's difficult. <laughs> y equals 0. Doesn't have to be a, it can be a constant function. Doesn't have to be a function that has a variable in it. All right, so there's our x bound 0 to 1, and our y goes from 0 to x. We're going to do the exact same thing, except we're going to treat it like, oh, that's way too close to label. Let me redraw this region. So let's do the easy part, constants. What 
is the y equals a? What number is a? Zero. Zero. What about the top or the biggest y value? One. So y is zero, y is one, or the bounds. What about the sides? Let's do the left side first. I need an x equals. That's it, x equals y. Maybe my function was a little too easy. What about the right bound? Right bound is x equals what? X equals, x equals one, right there. So you can do this problem either way. So I want you to do the integral right now and do it the opposite way that your neighbor's doing it. So somebody just make a choice in the row and then make sure you're all agreeing to not do what your neighbor's doing. And the second one, of course, is dx dy, obviously. Uh, you're assuming oh. that the, s well, we haven't looked at the surface yet. I'm not asking you for the area of a triangle. <laughs> I'm asking you <laughs> for the volume of the region on top of the triangle given by the z right here. So big F is 3 minus x minus y. So chances are it won't be the same amount of volume over each piece. It may be, but I'd, it I'm not. All right, so no matter which way you go, you can use this right here as your starting point, no matter which way you go. So I just left it as DA, so I didn't pick an order yet. I just left it with DA. You choose DX, DY, or DY, DX. And make sure you don't agree with your neighbor. Until the very last, <laughs> until your answer, <laughs> your answer better match.
this stuff too. Doesn't really matter. Okay, so you're just doing the inside first. So you should have gotten one, no matter which way you went. So there is a step, and it will be after you plug in your first endpoint. So this step that I am circling is, this should contain no Ys. So that should contain no Ys right there. So there's one point, depending on which way you go, if you go another route, you'll at some point have no Xs. Things get more complicated when we get into triple integrals. You'll start out with three variables. When you finish your first step, you'll be down to two. You finish your second full step, you'll be down to one. And then your last step, you'll be down to no variables, just numbers. So the earlier you understand things, the better. So understand them when they're just x's and y's before we go into polars, before we go into three variables. So I only went the dy dx direction, not that dx dy direction, but they're pretty, the antiderivatives are almost exactly the same. So you're going to see this notation where you have an integral and then your region is just written as r below it. So that just means double integral over whatever that region r is.
So R is the region bounded by the x-axis. Y equals x and x equals 1. That sounds really familiar. So that is the exact same region we had in the first one up here. So we can go either dy dx or dx dy. So I went dy dx. So let's go dx dy instead. So I'm going to go the second way this time. This one's a little bit more complicated, so I'm going to work through it. So I'm going to the second region. So our, we have a dx dy. dy, we're going 0, 1. That's our y's. And our x's go from 0 to y. Is that right? Half of you should have had that for your first one. All right. So same thing, same setup. It's just sine x over x is our height function now. So what should you be a little worried about? <laughs> yeah, doing that integral. I don't think we've seen this one yet, have we? <laughs> oh man, how in the world do we integrate that? You can't. All right. Hey, let's switch the order around. Maybe that's better. Where's my confused face? <laughs> so this was 0 to 1. This doesn't, something seems wrong here. I made a mistake somewhere. One of these should be a one. Yeah. Is it that, is, should this be a one? Is that where it's? It should be x is y to x equals x. Yeah, okay. Something wasn't computing. So y equals x to x equals 1. There we go. All right, can you do this y antiderivative? Yeah, <laughs> there's no y's there. So yeah, it's, it's actually trivial even though, oh, did I mess up the x endpoints too? Sure did. What would I have gotten? Negative the right answer. Well, assuming I didn't make any other mistakes. No, one. All right, here we go. Antiderivative of sine x over x is sine x over x times y. That was the y antiderivative of a constant. So I want you to finish this antiderivative. Make sure you plug in those values first. Subtract, and then see what you get. There's not really much plug in with the Yeah, there is. There's a y. Yeah, but zero it just kind of takes the other thing out entirely, so it's just zero. And then you well, yeah, so do it. Switch it to x, and it's just one thing. Yeah, it turns into a really nice problem.
So now we just have the antiderivative of sine, which is negative cosine. Cosine zero is not zero, so you don't get to just cross it out. Cosine zero is one. So you get negative cos one minus one. And we don't know what cos one is, so we'll just leave it as cos one. Absolutely. Hey, that wasn't so bad. So there's an example where there's probably a way to integrate this some way. Well, I shouldn't say probably. There may be a way to integrate it, but we certainly didn't do this last class or last quarter. If you want to try to tackle it maybe by parts, it's about the only thing I can really think of. Is it integration by parts? No. no?